Hi everybody, Jacob here. Welcome back to the Fashion Bunker. Chanel drama again. More stuff breaking and I'm gonna share it with you. We're gonna get into the nitty gritty, the details. I mean, it's a never ending story at this point. What can I tell ya? Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already here on the tubes. Push the join button next to the subscription button. Become a member today. Get access to extra perks. You can also join me on Patreon. Super Dacob all spelled together there as well for extra perks. Thank you to my members and patrons who have already pledged. This video is being filmed live in front of a live virtual audience. I live stream every Saturday on my Super Dacob main YouTube channel. You're all invited to join the live chats. Join the cult, the day cult. Get the merch while you're at it at www superdacob.com. We're all cultified already. It's all just a joke, obviously. Everything I say in this video is for entertainment purposes only. Just my opinion, not rooted in facts or truths. Everything's alleged. Let me cue in the chats. Hi, everybody. Welcome, my co-chators. Let's get straight to it. So <clears throat> we're going on a journey now. <laughs> not this kind of journey, although, but no. Bear with me, we're going on a traje trajectory. You know, when I deliver news like these, I'm always very methodical and very precise. You have to be, because if you're not, even though I am very precise and methodical, people still come for me. I don't know why. Because they think, oh my God, how dare you bash a brand? I'm not. I want them to do better, because I love them. Bottom line. So here goes. <clears throat> Costume jewelry. I have a bunch of it behind me in the box here, but this is an example. When you purchase something from Costume Jewelry by Chanel, you get it in a box, in different types of boxes. I mean, I have several boxes back here. Here's other ones I can show you. Let me just close this, because I always have to protect my costume jewelry, honey. I you best believe. There's a smaller version of the box. There's an elongated version. There's a lot of these. And the costume jewelry always comes packed in these little boxes. They used to come packaged in different boxes in the past, but this is what you get now. Inside of the uh, box, you get this sort of pouch, right? Every box has its own pouch. And um, it's, it's not like a pouch, it's like a cross. You can take it out. I'm gonna take this one out. So it, it fits snuggly in, so every box has its own pouch. It's detachable, it's not glued in. It's its own entity. And inside of the pouch, there's different sizes of these pouches. Uh, there's different uh, internal structures to these pouches. But anyway, so when you unfold it like a cross, I have something in here, I don't want it to fall out, hold on. I wrap my costume jewelry in tissue paper always on top of putting it in this. But so we're talking about this pouch, right? So you open it up and it's kind of like a cross and it has this particular pouch has these four holes that you can kind of put the brooch needle in so that you can kind of fix your brooch to this pouch and then you fold the pouch and the brooch is inside and it's protected. Coincidentally, I never use those little holes for the needles because I always protect my costume jewelry with extra tissue paper. But coincidentally, what, what is in here, I have a little eye candy moment. I have a beautiful, rare Metier d'A 2019 Paris, Egypt, well, Paris, New York, but I call it Paris, Egypt collection. I have this beautiful pharaoh, the faceless pharaoh brooch, plated 24 karat gold, by the way. We'll go, we'll go. That's why it's shiny so much. But anyway, now, here's the thing. These pouches are made in a, like a flocked rubbery material. They also smell very chemical when you get them. I mean, it doesn't say where they were made, but we can kind of guess, right? And, um... A couple of years ago, now in the past past, Chanel did not have these pouches. Uh, what did Chanel have in the past? Here's an example of a much better Chanel costume jewelry box. Black cover with that kind of like leathery grain. 
upper. Look at that texture. They still do their shoe boxes with this texture for the most part. They used to do their sunglasses in this texture as well, but they didn't. They stopped. Uh, and then they have we have the the lid, and then we have the white interior box. But look at this. The lid on the inside had a satin extra kind of compartment. It's like a elevated structure. It's a white satin with a black printed Chanel. I mean, gorgeous. This was quality. They had this little satiny interior. It's not cardboard. This is satin inside. The exterior is cardboard, right? And then on the inside, here's a beautiful vintage piece. So if it was like a big chunky chain, oh, I'm going to show you something very special from the archives that I very rarely show. But before I show it to you, I just want to first show you, you see, you would have this like foamy bottom that would be like soft for the costume jewelry to not get hurt. Even though you can take this foam out and underneath you have gorgeous black velvet. The whole box is in velvet. It absorbs light like crazy. That's why it looks so black. But it's a beautiful, silky, soft velvet. This is how their boxes used to be made. Look at the, the, the quality of it all. And then, um, so you put in the little soft foam bit. This is from the 90s, and it's still pristine, by the way. Did not degrade at all. And then you get a pouch. 100% cotton pouch. The sizes vary depending on what piece you purchase. And the size of the pouch always fits the box. So you get the cotton pouch. Now, what do I have in here is a 90s 24 karat gold plated belt, which you can use as a necklace. But so this one is from 1994. Autumn winter 1994 is the stamp. Made in France, baby. So, this is a belt. <laughs> which I'm trying to show you in a nice way, elegantly and affluently, but it's not working right now because it's doing what it wants to do. So, this is... <sighs> Come on. All right. You guys, it just does what it wants to do. Sorry. Hold on. Because you got to lock it on the other side. Okay, I get it, Jacob. Thank you. Trying to show a nice little historical Chanel moment here. And the belt is like, you know what? No. No, I don't want to. <laughs> the belt is like, no, girl. Ain't happening. Not today. All right, then. Hold on. Let me twist you properly. Ugh. Okie dokie. Here we go. So this is the belt. You got to be very, very skinny, right? <laughs> to wear it. Oh, you're twisted. Oh, God, it's twisted again. You know what? No. Patience is key. The devil is in the detail, they say. Well, we're going to give him detail. There you go. been twisted for the gods and now we have untwisted it okay perfection there you go it's all nice and straight and tight so you got these chunky double c logos on the belt and then this part this chain just hangs and then you have this little double c moment right there gorgeous piece now, I wear it as a necklace because, honey, this isn't even the size of my thigh, let alone um, my waistline. Because, let's be honest here, you know what I mean? It's a moment. We can pull it off. This works perfectly as a necklace, in my humble opinion. Flip yourself, will ya? Thank you. Come on. All right. So that's how I wear it. Um, however, back to the problems. 
So this is how the boxes used to be made. Now they don't give you these pouch, the cotton pouches anymore, the silk, the velvety interior, the satiny top, nothing. Now they give you these kind of highly plastified boxes and these pouches. Now, problem. Here I have been buying Chanel costume jewelry for decades, but my pouches from 2016 and older, well, remember the video I made with the melting Chanel sunglasses case? Check out that video also on my channel. Well, similar is happening, happen, happen, <laughs> happening to these plastic pouches. In the past, they used to be Kind of this flocked plastic on the inside and on the outside all of the ones that are now from 2016 or older some in some cases even 2017 and older they start degrading the um, the soft makers in this plastic fall apart and i have to zoom in to show you this so what is happening here now basically this flocking is starting to there you go here for example you see it very clearly it, it just falls off now mind you this is just a protective pouch i don't open and close it every day it's usually it just stands in its place for ever but this what happens here will happen throughout the entire piece and actually all i gotta do is rub and look look it it, it just falls off like dust there See it? It looks like pepper or something on my hands. And it's so disgusting and it sticks to everything. And Chanel knows this. Let me clean myself up. Um, Chanel knows this. This issue has been addressed. What did Chanel do? Instead of changing completely their system and bringing back the old system, which was much better, because this old system of a box from the 90s is still perfect with the foam, with the velvet, with the satin. It's still per perfect, but they're not bringing that back. No. So what do they do here? So, as I said, this kind of dusty part that's falling apart, they did the exterior and the interior. Already years ago, they started getting complaints. So what they did next was, let me show you an example of the pouch that I still, well, I don't have it anymore. <laughs> Where did it go? Oh, here it is. So what they changed now, they took this um, plasticky bit off from the interior. So now the interior is kind of like cotton, same cotton that they use for their eyewear at the moment. This is the exterior of the eyewear cases that I've been buying lately. They're boutique exclusives. So now they have cotton on the inside, but the exterior is still in that material that degrades after several years. It starts falling apart. So the exterior is still the same material as this one that is now falling apart. So Chanel knows this. And the only change they implemented was to put cotton on the inside, but the exterior is still falling apart after a certain amount of years. Now, you might say, well, who cares? You didn't buy the pouch, you bought the brooch. You bought the brooch. And is the brooch fine after 10 years? Sure, the brooch has a certain quality. It, it's, if you maintain it properly, if you don't put water onto it, no chemicals onto it, the brooch can last you a lifetime, hopefully. Everything I say in this video is for entertainment purposes only. Everything's alleged, not rooted in truths or facts. So just saying, just my opinion. So my opinion is Chanel costume jewelry, if you keep it right, it can last you forever. I mean, this thing is from the 90s. Look how gorgeous it still looks. Not a flaw in it. Now, problem is this. Some of you are going to say, who cares, Jacob? You're buying the piece of costume jewelry, not the pouch. Well, guess what? The problem is that, uh, and my sales associate told me this, that there have been a lot of reports and um, claims, warranty claims, especially on costume jewelry pieces that have pearls on them. Glass pearls or 
fresh water pearls. Some costume jewelry at Chanel also has fresh water pearls. Most of it is glass pearls. But the finish of the glass pearls is also coated in a synthetic material to give them that pearlescent style. The problem is that the these pouches, especially the older versions that have the rubber on the inside and on the outside, the interior rubber that touches the pearls stuck to the pearls and colored the pearls. And the pearls turn black or they get stained, they get spots on them and you can't clean that up. So Chanel took the rubbery stuff off the inside, but they kept it on the outside. I'm like, why don't you change the whole thing? Like, stop being a cheap ass. Like, change it. Make it better. You used to do great boxes in the past. Why did you make them worse? So I'm lucky because I'm obsessive about archiving stuff. So as I've shown you before, when I buy Chanel costume jewelry, even though I keep them in their boxes, I always take tissue paper and I always wrap white tissue paper, mind you, not nothing colored, just white, because um, you don't want any pigments, you know, off of the. And I wrap my costume jewelry always in white tissue paper. I fold it nicely, put some desiccants with it, and then I put it into the box. Thank God I was doing that, because guess what was in this pouch that's falling apart with all the with all this all this dust. I had this piece in here, but it's wrapped in paper, but what I had in there is a very special piece. It's one of the Goussaint uh, Byzantine crosses, and we got pearl, pearl, and then we got crushed pearls in there. And then here we have tiny little pearls going around here. So had I kept this brooch in this pouch, this pouch belonged to this brooch. This brooch, these pearls would be black now. But thank God I wrap everything always in white tissue paper. So I preserved this brooch. This brooch has no flaws. Thank goodness for that. So... Of course, I spoke to my sales associate and I said, listen, do you have any alternatives? She's like, no, I can just give you, you know, because I know you very well. I know you're not a reseller. I know you're not going to abuse this. You know, she said, I can give you like every time you come visit me and you buy something, I can give you an extra box with an extra pouch. So you get a fresh pouch at least every time. So you can kind of throw away the older pouches and use the newer ones. And I'm like, yeah, that doesn't help me. <laughs> because that's no long-term solution because the newer pouch, even though it has cotton on the inside, the exterior has this terrible rubber and it's still going to fall off and it's going to look disgusting after some time. Coincidentally, even their jewelry and watches. Yeah. their fine jewelry and really expensive watches come in those cases that open up like that. The interior of those cases is also made in this material that falls apart after a certain period of time. It's disgusting. Thankfully, at least their rings, they come in a little leather pouch. The ring actually gets a leather pouch, which that's awesome. But, so it is bad because their costume jewelry is super expensive, but these pouches are just the cheapest thing you could ever see uh, and, and get. And it's gonna damage your costume jewelry long-term if you don't know this. So that's why I'm sharing this information to help you guys out, not to throw shade, randomly at Chanel, but to help you guys out. And also to tell you there is hope. And I have discovered something. And here is where I see the vital connection between Chanel fashion and Chanel beauty. And you might say, what do you mean, Jacob? Well, usually Chanel fashion snobs Chanel beauty uh, because, you know, they think they're on a higher level and blah, blah, blah. But I asked my sales associate, do you have, like you did in the past, <clears throat> do you have cotton pouches? Because I'm going to wrap my costume jewelry into the tissue paper and then I'll just put it into the cotton pouch and I'll put the cotton pouch into the box and I'm good to go. She's like, oh no, we don't do these cotton pouches anymore since years. But then I remembered something. I remembered something very important. 
I remembered that a year or two ago, Chanel Beauty stopped producing nylon pouches and started producing cotton pouches. Now, they only make this size because they're meant to put like two little freebie creams inside, you know. So it's just a little beauty extra accessory, but they're 100% cotton. So obviously this is the size you get. They don't make bigger ones for bigger costume jewelry. So this is for brooches, for earrings, but it's a freebie, right, from Chanel. And here you have the little, it says it's made in China, of course. So there you have the little, let me, let me zoom that in for you. Oh, okay. So you have made in China. And then on the other side, it's going to tell you 100% cotton right at the bottom there. You know, offered by Chanel because it's a freebie. You get it at the beauty boutique. And it says 100% cotton at the bottom. So this is, so I, I tell my fashion uh, advisor, I'm like, hey, do you have these? She's like, oh, no, we don't. But I remember that beauty boutique has them. So I go to the beauty boutique and I ask, like, you know, Seals Associate I've been working with for a long time. Like, hey, <laughs> these little things from Chanel, uh, from the fashion side are falling apart. Can you stock me up on these? Now, obviously, of course, now they don't have them at the moment. So it's really hard to get them and they, they reorder them, but they don't always get them as they order them. So even these have become rare, but this is what I'm using now. So for example, and I'm slowly starting to switch all of these yucky things uh, with these beautiful little cotton things. So let me show you how that looks like. For this particular brooch that I thankfully saved because I was always wrapping it in white tissue paper. Let me show you how that works. So we're going to wrap this beauty up in white tissue paper. I also always put a little desiccant with it as I put it into its slumber. And then we add another desiccant because <laughs> you can never have enough desiccants. Patsy Stone would say you can never have enough shoes and gloves. I say you can never have enough desiccants. All right. And then we wrap it up nicely. So it's nicely protected with the tissue paper. And then it has its pouch. I put it in its pouch. I don't pull this straight. I mean, you can, but I don't because the brooch is flat. It's not rounded up. So I, I keep this flat. Then I create with tissue paper a little bit of cushioning. I put another little desiccant in there just for good measure. But I create a little cushioning system. So it's nice and soft. I place my brooch. Let me turn it like this so you guys can see better. I place my brooch in here. Now, the pouch is a little bit longer than the box. So what I do is I flip it underneath. I fold it underneath, push it in, and then basically these little tiny pull strings are facing upwards like that. And it fits perfectly. And then all I do, I fold this close so it has more cushioning. It's more protected. I put my uh, little drawing that I make personally. So whenever I open a box, I know immediately what costume jewelry, because I have a lot of them. So I know exactly what's inside. I made my own little drawing for it. And I close it. So this is what I'm saying. We got to kind of create our own solution because Chanel doesn't give it to us. <laughs> so... That's that. No, I'm not worried about it getting too dry. No, it's not leather. It's metal. Um, perfection. But not everybody has these pouches. But so I'm saying if you still, of course, you, you, they don't have to be Chanel. You can just buy cotton pouches. You can cut cotton together, sew them together and make these yourself. But if you're spending so much money on Chanel, on a Chanel piece of costume jewelry, you want to have everything from Chanel, obviously. So this is kind of my hack, like how to get something from Chanel, still original from Chanel that can help you archive your pieces. 
You know what I mean? Because this is definitely reminiscent of their original uh, little satchels that they used to make for their costume jewelry in the past, also made in cotton. You know, they were a little bit better made. The cotton here was waxed. They have these little tiny grommets uh, at the perforations of the cotton. So, I mean, of course, a little bit more effort went into making these old school ones. But the new ones do the job just fine. Uh, you know, it's just like, come on, we got to go through. Like, why doesn't Chanel just do this? Just make these pouches. They're definitely cheaper than making this that then falls apart. So then why don't you just make these pouches and give them to us for costume jewelry instead of these disgusting things that fall apart. It's 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 literally disgusting. I still have black dots all over my hands. Like I still have to wash up after I shoot I shot this video. So what I want to say is there is still hope in terms of you can always still find a way a DIY moment, right? To to protect your costume jewelry, but just this is a warning, a friendly, gentle warning to everybody who's buying Chanel costume jewelry. Inspect these pouches, wrap your costume jewelry in white tissue paper before you put them into these pouches. If you need to use these pouches, definitely first wrap your costume jewelry into white tissue paper. And that's how you're going to protect, especially the pearly uh, pieces of Chanel costume jewelry. So that's my tip to you, like a little hack. On top of that would be to go to Chanel Beauty and ask if they would be so kind to give you a couple of these little cotton pouches. And that way you can still have your little moment. You're exchanging this Chanel plasticky pouch with this Chanel cottony pouch. It still feels luxurious-ish. Although it's not anymore what it used to be in the past, right? So that's that's my tip to you. I hope you've liked this video. Let me know if you have any other tips on how to preserve your costume jewelry. Of course, the best would be if you have just a special walk-in wardrobe with a kind of a drawer that you pull out just for costume jewelry. But truth be told, I don't like to keep all my eggs in one basket. Somebody breaks in and then like they open the drawer. Oh, thank you. All the jewelry in one spot. Yep. So no, I separate. So for me, I never feel comfortable having everything in one space. But other than that, if you have any ideas on how you store it within boxes, let me know. Thank you so much for watching. Um, they have a contract with the manufacturer, says Leanne. I don't know. Maybe they... I've, Chanel can always cancel whatever they want. <laughs> yes, check your items often, lesson learned. That's a good one, Debbie, for sure. For sure. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. And let me know if this was helpful. If it was, thumb up, subscribe. Never give up on love.